What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do I always send you? DJLittleRock.com. One more time djlittlerock.com check availability and get a free price quote and maybe you can have me at your next event you know i like to party with the people the people need to be entertained are you not entertained let me entertain you ah today on the program Corey m coons oh you know that name you've been listening long enough you know he's our man in ontario uh, just a little south of ottawa uh, you could find him playing his guitar uh, and singing his sing his songs uh, all around the Ottawa and uh, Ontario area. But uh, he's so much more. He's so much more than that. And uh, we're going to catch up with him in the next few minutes. So stick around for some Corey M. Coons. This week's shows, I have, well, kind of two public shows Maybe one and a half public shows. I don't know how public the second show is. Uh, let's see. The first show, Friday night, uh, is my usual Friday night gig at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. The video dance party, karaoke jam at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. That's at 8 p.m. until uh, 1230 in the AM. They got a full bar. The kitchen's open. Pool tables, pool tournament on Friday nights. So if you want to try your hand at playing pool and possibly make some money while you're doing it, come on out to the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. Always a good time. They got new ownership. Uh, so they're, it, the, the owners are the owners of the Italian restaurant that's on 65 in, uh, in Conway, Arkansas. So they're changing up the menu over at the Rab. So they're getting some, I mean, some really delicious food. They sent me home with some uh, pulled pork last week. Mm, oh, it's so delicious. So delicious. And then they um, they got like gyros and uh that's just they're getting real fancy. And even uh the serving plates are getting fancier. They have these rectangular serving plates that uh that the uh the servers have been bringing out. So, yeah, uh things are changing over at the Rab. It's always been a good time, but uh new management, uh you know, people they want to shake things up. And I think they're doing a good job. So I'm stoked about that. So come on out to the Rab. And on Saturday, I did have a wedding in Hot Springs, but the uh, the groom just called me today, and he said he had to postpone it. So I got nothing going on on Saturday. So, uh, hey, you know, if you have a party that's coming up that uh, that needs some some uh, some DJ services, maybe somebody that's stuttering and tongue-tied like I am right now, <laughs> Uh, in the Conway, Arkansas area, hey, give me a call, and uh, we'll work something out, have a party on Saturday night. But Sunday, this is the the thing I was talking about. I'm not sure how public this show is, but I'm going to go ahead and announce it. It's the uh, the Conway Pride uh, over at um, uh, Laurel Park, and that's at uh, 1 p.m. until about w uh, 5 p.m., and they got, um, oh, my goodness, it's just it's celebrating their, their Conway Pride. Uh, I'm kind of excited to be a part of it. I don't think I've, i well, I know I've never been a part of the Conway pride. You know, I'm from, uh, the Florida keys. So there was a lot of events like that, the pride events, but they have, um, I think over 30 performers that, that are going to be singing songs, uh, in drag, which is kind of fun. Um, so it, it's a, a sight to see and, a, a hear, wait, a a, a Audio to be heard. <laughs> Boy, I have a way with words right now, don't I? That's, so that's Conway Pride this uh, Sunday, um, the 12th. Is it the 12th? No, the 13th. Sorry. From 1 p.m. until 5 p.m. in Laurel Park, Conway, Arkansas. Hey, come on out. I'm going to have the whole karaoke set up. So if, uh, if we run out of uh, singers, you can sing a karaoke song too. Why not? Why not? We'll have some fun. All right, speaking of fun, let's get into it with Corey M. Coons. I got him on Skype. So if you're listening to the audio version, I encourage you to check out the video version on my YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Keys Dan. All right, Skyping Corey M. Coons. 
now. There he is. <laughs> there you are. Like a pro, man. Like a pro. Get yourself all centered up and, and looking good. We'll get some video as well as audio. Let the people know all about you, man. What's going on in the world? Corey, How's that? Yeah, looking good, man. Corey M. Coons, man. It's been a little while since we've chatted. Uh, last time we talked, I guess you were, uh, well, let's see. I guess all through your 20s, we talked about you were a touring musician all over the, the south, uh, eastern United States, uh, and and around Ottawa, Canada. That's where we left you. And then um, I guess you got married, and you got a, a child, and became a family man, and went solo, and then uh, kind of stick around Ottawa, stay close to home. Is that where we're at? What, what are we doing? Let, let's catch up. What, what's happening in the world of Corey M. Coons? Wow, man, you just went through all the years. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't yes. have to go through all that spiel anymore. If people want to know all about you, they can go and check out the, the first uh, edition of Corey M. Coons on the What Makes You Famous podcast. I mean, now we're catching up, man. Your your songwriting, your, your what, what are you doing? Well, first of all, it's awesome to be here again. Thanks so much for the opportunity once again. And uh, it's been what over couple, well close to maybe what year and a half. I don't know what it's been since we've been chatting, but but definitely still uh, still south of Ottawa, still out in the country, in a little uh, near a town called South Mountain, Ontario. And uh, still here on my uh, my grandparents' original farm, and uh, of course with my wife and my daughter now, and so we've been living here for quite a few years, and uh, still kind of hanging, still doing the same things, writing songs, recording songs, getting out and playing music again, and you know, <laughs> there's my daughter in behind saying hello again. <laughs> well, I remember uh, last time, and people that are just listening to the audio version, uh, check out the video version, because things pop up behind you. Uh, last time, I think a bunny rabbit popped up behind you, uh, you know, and uh, now, uh, you know, it's been replaced by something better, your daughter popping up. It's good. It, has she shown any, any interest in music or following in dad's footsteps? Yeah, she's still pretty musical. She, uh, we've, we've got some Christmas songs we're going to start working on for a show we've got coming up at the end of the month. So we'll do a little mini set of Christmas songs with my show that I've got going on for that. And But she's very uh, artistic. She's into doing a lot of video editing now on her tablet. She's like doing all kinds of things. She creates her own little TikTok videos. And oh, there's Icy the uh, Beanie Boo popping in there now behind me. So Well, last so, time yeah. we talked, uh, you had a song that you wrote uh, many, many, many years prior to when uh, your child was born. And then uh, you retooled it a little bit and had her sing along with you. What was the response on that on that song? It was a pretty cool response. That was a really unique situation because it was a 30-year-old song that I wrote at, uh, I guess, around the end of high school days. And um, it was just very fun to go back and kind of re-record it as an acoustic sort of version and have her play on or sing on it and stuff. And and yeah, it got some pretty cool response. I mean, it was uh, anything that she kind of gets her hand in, people seem to think it's pretty cool. And of course, it makes me feel good, obviously, you know. So, yeah. So, and then of course, we did the Christmas song actually too, um, Burning Bright at Christmas Time. We released that in uh, late 2020, I guess it was. What, what, was, so it, what uh, was the name of the original song? Far Away was the original song. Far Away. Okay. And then the, the name of the Christmas song? Burning bread at Christmas time. Burning bread at Christmas time. Now I have talked. What's that? Burning bright at Christmas time. Burning bright at Christmas time. Yes. Yeah. Now what I've heard. Okay. If if an artist uh, such as yourself, if you can get a Christmas song to go uh, and to become uh, somewhat uh, get some notoriety, you are set for the rest of your life and, and even beyond because that song will continue to play every christmas so uh you know that's it, it's nice to celebrate christmas for sure that's an, a, a beautiful thing uh it's a great time of the year people uh seem to be more giving more smiley but if you can get a a, a christmas song on the on the business side of this show business that takes off my goodness you are set yeah you're, you're gonna get uh what is it that mailbox money that that money that that you get when you sleep <laughs> And I know that we 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 ended up last um, the last podcast where we were talking about the business side, 
you know, how are artists making any money any, anymore? Uh, are they, you know, they, they can't sell albums so much, and it's playing live a lot. I, I love that. Yeah. I love your daughter. She's that's wonderful that she's uh, wanting to be a part of it all. And, and we're always looking as parents uh, for activities for our children to, to, to do with our children. And I'm glad you have the gift of song. It seems like you have a good relationship going there. Uh, but, uh, I mean, tell, tell me about, you know, how did the Christmas song come about and, uh, and beyond? Well, I always wanted to write my own original Christmas song. And uh, so that kind of came about, like I said, a couple of years ago. And... Um, just very proud of that because um, I mean, there's lots of cover songs, and oddly enough, we have a new cover version of a Christmas song coming out soon. By the end of this month, we've got a version of uh, "I Saw Mama Kissing Santa Claus," sort of a <clears throat> acoustic take on uh, the John Mellencamp version he did in the '80s. So, and of course, Charlie will be singing on the uh, the end version or the end part of that song at the you know in the uh, Christmas song. So, I just uh, I don't know. I, I've always liked Christmas and. Um, getting into the spirit of things and of course family is a big part of that and this time's cool too because i got some of the guys in my band playing on the track for the cover song that we're doing so two guys from my uh, my current band called the dirt road gypsies so and uh we did it in mark's studio my good friend mark muir played lead guitar on it and produced it and stuff and then my buddy kevin amon played the uh the cajon drum so we put it all together and of course charlie sings on it and uh so we're excited about it. So yeah, I it's think always that, something. that was a gig that you were playing that was coming up. It, it, you were either going to go acoustic or with one other guitarist or with the Cajon player. Now, you were talking about Mommy uh, Kissing Santa Claus. Uh, Michael Jackson did a version of that back in the 70s as well. I mean, that's a, right. that's a very popular song. I, I think the day after Halloween uh, is, uh, is officially when stores start putting out uh, Christmas uh, decorations and what have you. I mean, like it's not even it's not even November. It's not. I mean, it's not even Thanksgiving yet. Stop, stop, hold it back. No, but then they uh, they open the box and uh, Mariah Carey uh, comes out with her song as well, and you'll be hearing that the rest of the year. Hopefully, Corey M. Coons has a little little spot in the rotation there. Uh, I I didn't get a chance to hear the the, the Christmas song, but I'm going I'm looking forward to it. I do a lot of Christmas uh, parties. So I'll definitely pop that yeah. on. And if it has a video or at least a lyric video, it stands even more of a chance uh, to get played at one of my shows for sure because I like putting the visual uh, images. I know on your YouTube page you have uh, quite a few uh, music videos on there, uh, even if they're, they're lyric videos. But, man, ever since we talked the last time, I think you've been getting more and more thoughtful about what's going on in the world. Uh, the Long Hard Rain, the Freedom Road, uh, Leaving uh, was just coming out, I think. But um, and I see the burning bright at Christmas time on your YouTube page. But the the Freedom Road and the Long Hard Rain, those things are really driving home what's going on in the world today. Uh, are, are 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 we going to survive? Well, you know, I really uh, I like to touch on some personal things and some things that are going on in the world, you know, and uh, the last couple of those singles that I released were, uh, you know, probably I think Long Hard Rain was a little more melancholy, maybe a little more um, a little darker, you know, not, not extremely dark. There's always hope and hopeful stuff in my music, I think. But, um, you know, I was a little bit more. Uh, I don't know how you'd say it. it's sort of like a tumultuous time, maybe, you know, a sense of foreboding hanging over someone, you know, kind of stuff like that. And, so, of course, Freedom Road, that just speaks of, uh, you know, everything that's been going on for the last two and a half years and a lot of the, uh, uh, I don't know, a lot of the things that we've lost, maybe, especially in this country that uh, people take for granted, you know. Well, uh, specifically, I mean, I, I know that there was the, the problem with the truck drivers, and I have three brothers-in-law that are, all, that are truck drivers and, uh, you know, drive cross-country, one in particular that drives you know, cross country uh, trucking. He actually just lost his job. He come. He came back to work just last week and said. And his boss looked at I don't know twenty, thirty drivers and said, uh, "Okay, don't come back tomorrow. We're done. Like that's that's yeah. it. No more job. You know, that's uh, the lifeblood of the of the world is the 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 drivers. That's how you get your goods. But I mean, that, oh, I that was part of the song. But tell tell me about what, what do you think about all that? Well, I think the truckers made uh, made a dent in the whole world. I think the Canadian truckers started a really big uh, 
a big movement around the world, and a lot of notice has been taken since what they've done. You know, just standing up for your beliefs, standing up for what's right, morals and stuff, and uh, the freedoms, you know, that we, people say, well, you know, what freedoms have you lost? But there's a lot of stuff going on that people still don't realize, you know. If you want to get into the whole mainstream media bit and that whole sort of thing, that's a whole other story, but we'll, we'll leave that for another time, but... Well, I know I'm wow. I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not as knowledgeable as as uh, as the next person you know as anybody on, on the media. I have a very fuzzy uh, idea of what's going on in the world, but I, things affect you. Uh, you know, they're, whether you like it or not, they're going to affect you. Um, and the, the truck driving situation. I mean, I it, it came down to uh, I guess you just want a a decent wage, a living wage. You know, people want to survive. Uh, it seems like the um, there's a that, that, that whole thing about the one percent and what have you but uh you know you you turn your feelings into songs and uh you know yeah. it, that's and that's a superpower that you have you're a storyteller I know that there was the uh was it the MTV storytellers I feel like if I go to a Corey M Coon song I mean uh show where you are a solo with an acoustic guitar I'm gonna get a story I'm gonna come out with a yeah. feeling with ideas is am I getting this right Definitely. I mean, like I said before, I love to touch on uh, telling a good story. I like to reach people and resonate with people on certain things. And, you know, if it's things that are going on in the world, I mean, that's one thing. And then if it's personal things that are happening and ideas that really hit home with people, whatever that may be, you know, and that's that's a big thing for me. I think if you can do that, if you can resonate with the listener and the fans, I think you've done your job right as a songwriter. You know, to me, that's kind of what it's all about. So. Now, when maybe somebody, something to think about. Oh yeah, when you're doing your your uh, solo shows, you're um, uh, you know sitting in the, uh, you know maybe at a restaurant or a, or a smaller club or, uh, you know, it, are you telling stories about the songs before you go into them, or you know do you give them a little background of where you were in your headspace before uh, before you uh, wrote the song and and sang the song and then you know, ultimately produced it. I mean, I, I know that you, you've been making albums uh, since uh, solo, at least since 99. So you've had a, a, quite a bit of experience and you have a lot of knowledge in your, you know, in, in your head. Do you spit that knowledge out to the people? At, and how do they feel about that if you do? I think I kind of let the songs write themselves. I think I really like to have people take away their own little meanings and their own personal things that come out of a song. I mean, I could sit there and say, hey, this song is about this, you know, but in a way that's kind of giving it away. I like the mystery, the mystery and the mysteriousness of it all, where if you sing a song and you tell the story, someone else is going to take something a little different than what you take from it. You know, obviously you write songs for yourself and you want to please yourself as an artist, and that's always a, a big thing, an important thing, right? But I mean, ultimately it's up to the listener. They may have a different you know, take on something that I may have. So I think I kind of like it. I like the mystery of it all. I like to, uh, to leave people guessing in some, in some ways. So. Well, Corey M. Coons, that is spoken like a true creative. I mean, I, I, you know, you go to an, an art art gallery and you view a painting and you, you have all these critics, you know, maybe you have two or three different critics uh, that are art experts, you know, with the quote unquote, right. And they'll have three different ideas of what the artist was thinking when they were painting that, but no one really knows because that art, that artist has been long gone for hundreds of years, right? And but uh, mm -hmm. this is how you know the people can interpret your songs. And you watch a movie and you think, oh, the director was probably uh, trying to give you an idea of uh, about uh, a certain political uh, view that he had, and when he wasn't even thinking that at all, he's just trying to make a movie that was fun, you know. Yeah, I, I guess that 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 has its uh, its own merit. That's beautiful that you leave it you leave it to the to the listener to make up their own mind about the song. So I mean, so tell tell me what you what what you wanted to come back on for, and uh, what specifically is happening in, in the world of Corey and M. Coons. Well, like I was saying, we had the single "Long Hard Rain" that came out. Um, I guess kind of towards the uh, middle of the summer there, it kind of came out and uh, it did very well. We were really, really happy with that song. And uh, like I had mentioned before, it was recorded with my good friend, Mark, Mark Muir, who's my lead guitar player. And he lives in Cornwall, Ontario. And we did it at his studio between there and tracking the drums with my buddy, Kevin from the band at uh, his other little studio that he has. So we still share files and stuff back and forth. That's kind of the way things get done anymore, you know? 
it's difficult to get uh, three people or four people into the same room at one time anymore to, to really work on things with schedules and families and everything. So, but uh, we're really happy with it. Like I said, um, it's a little darker. It's uh, you know uneasiness of stuff that's been going on in the world, maybe or relationships. You know, could could be a little bit about that as well. Some spiritual stuff and just reflecting and holding on to heartbreak, tough love, discipline, stuff like that, all kind of wrapped into that idea, you know. So we're happy with it. I mean, it came out on MTS Records with Michael Stover and MTS Management. And, uh, of course, you know, Michael's awesome. and love working with Michael. And we've just got the new, like I said, the new Christmas singles coming up. Um, uh, I saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus, and it's going to be the cover song. And we've got that coming up it's scheduled for release on the 25th of November. So we're, we'll promote that up until Christmas, you know, through the Christmas season. And uh, so we're looking forward to getting that out there, too. So just in time and for the Christmas be a video. Hopefully there'll be a video coming up for that, too. So just in time for the Christmas holiday, the the season, yeah. you, you know, um, I, I guess. Uh, OK, there's another thing is the happy holidays versus happy Christmas. And I, I know that people ha- have problems with with both. But I think it's, you know, if you say happy holidays, you don't know what what somebody believes. So um, maybe you're being more respectful when you say that. I, I guess I, I'm coming around on that. I used to be uh, real hard nosed on Happy Christmas, even though I'm not as religious as I was when I was a kid. Uh, but uh, I think ha- the 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 consensus now is is you say Happy Holidays, and and they can take that as oh yeah, I celebrate this uh, in the, the Kwanzaa or the or the uh, the Ch- the Hanukkah or the. Or the Christmas, uh, it, yeah, it just—I I don't know. Respect, I guess it's—it's it's about respect and and how to you know, how to live with your fellow man. I know it's tumultuous uh, sometimes uh, trying to get get around and and it gets sticky. You know, I, I have a uh, an event that's coming up that's that 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 could be sticky. But um, I mean, are you? Uh, you know, I, I just I, I know that you don't want to interpret the songs, but I want you to to interpret the songs. Fine. You know, tell me what you were feeling when you wrote the songs. And um, the um, the studio that you're recording in, is that an open studio? Can people go there? I mean, I want you to give shout outs to them and make sure that they get their uh, their due as well. So that maybe some more people will roll through that studio and record some songs. Oh, definitely. Uh Mirrors Music Manor in Cornwall is an open, you know, it's a public studio. It's in Mark's house, but I mean, he does a lot of work with, with the Cornwall, Ontario music scene. And uh, so definitely a big shout out to Mark and his studio there. And uh, and also my drummer, Kevin, who has uh, the uh, music school, actually. And I used to teach at the music school up until a couple of years ago. And it's a good, you know, I used to teach guitar and I still teach guitar at home. We probably touched on that the last time and stuff. And, and um, so, yeah, I mean, but the, as far as the songs go, I mean, um you could talk about Christmas and stuff and with, with, with relation to the songs too. I'm kind of old school. So, I mean, uh, if I say, if I say Merry Christmas to somebody, I mean, that's, that's what I feel. I mean, if you want to say something else, that's totally your call, but don't tell me that I can't say it. That's kind of where I'm at with the whole thing. If you want to get deeper into that, because, uh, you know, a lot of people think that they have to take everything away from, from people that have, you know, got their customs and stuff. And I'm all for people having your own customs, but don't come and tell me to take you know, take mine away because you don't think it's cool. You know, that's that's where I'm at with that. Yeah. So when it comes to the songwriting, I mean, if you think of Freedom Road, I mean, there's a lot of stuff with that song. I mean, that's a lot about um, with what's been happening in Canada. And, you know, you touched on the truckers and stuff. Now, there's a different thing maybe with the truckers in the States than there has been here in Canada because there's a lot of, there's been a lot of, um, I don't know what you would say. It's a... There's a word, it's unfair stuff that's been happening, and it's like got what? a lot to do with I, I, I'm not a lot familiar. Of, a lot I, of, with the mandates, with the mandates and the crossing the border and stuff, and and it's just a lot about freedom of choice. And there's been a lot of freedom of choice that's been pushed aside with a lot of people in Canada, and that's what the truckers were standing up for, and that's really what that song kind of covers about, you know, our, our, our freedom of choice and our should be respected for a lot of things. So that's kind of where that song's at. So. Like a, a yeah. choice, the choices of, of what you said going across the border. Was there a problem going across well, with the vaccine mandates? I mean, that was the whole mandate thing that was that came across. It's just been very, very so much division. The song is about bringing people together, about unity and not having division. You know what I mean? But this country has been a lot of division in the last two and a half years, and especially with the current person in power. <laughs> we'll leave it at that without name dropping. Well, I know I, for one, never uh, wanted to build a wall, ever. 
You know, I, right. I, we don't need op- maybe open borders. You know, it's still, you know, people should show a, a license or some kind of an ID as they come across. Oh, and, yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it, there needs to be some kind of regulation. I'm not for anarchy. Uh, you know, I guess a, a full libertarian would be a, an anarchist. And, and we need some rules. We need some, uh, you know, we need some, uh, some basis. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, sweep up your own front yard and the whole world will be clean. If everybody swept their own front yard, the whole world would be clean. Now, hey, I noticed you have a, a C, is that a CD rack in in your background? Is Are those actual CDs? Yeah. Grandpa, yeah. what's a CD? Uh, you know, what what's in that rack? What's the, go through the the front part of that rack. What's in your CD collection there? Oh. There's so much stuff in over the years and that. My goodness. What's in the first one here? Oh, I've got stuff like uh Keith Urban, I've got uh, Zach Brown band, some old Johnny Cash and country stuff here like Kenny Rogers and then then I've got like the classic and classic rock and hair band stuff like Ozzy Osbourne and and docking and all kinds of like you know melodic i got a whole broad scope of stuff wait a minute that's the whole <laughs> podcast that we talked about last time the front part of that rack is your mom and the side part is the cover band that you played in the uh in the that's in right. the 90s you know uh, so uh exactly. yeah that's your life history right there in that in that rack of cds and i'm so i'm so impressed that you still have your cds i've lost almost every record that I ever had. I think I have two records. One from a new artist that uh, just gave sent me one. I have Jimi Hendrix Experience. That's the last record nice. that I have. Classic record. And then uh, a Billy Billy Crayon sent me a record. <laughs> and that, that's it. Those are my two records that I own. <laughs> so uh, I have my record up here you can't see them they're off the screen but they're in the corner i have like a bunch of old albums still too oh my goodness i had thousands of records and i know we talked about liner notes and 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 fodder and and just the amazing you know new records you know the the these kids today will never know what it is to go to a record store i guess they're popping up now in niche form but you know even as a professional dj i don't play records anymore i have a computer no with a uh, with a two two turntable uh, interface, so technically I have every song in the world ever made. If I have internet, I can buy it right then. You know, oh, you want to hear that song? Oh, I don't have it in this hard drive. Let me buy it for you real quick. Put it in this hard drive. I will play it for you in thirty seconds. You know, it's the Very cool. I, it used to be I'd have a crate of of records, and if I went to a party. That was what you were listening to. Nothing more. You could not hear another thing. But now, you know, the Internet, it can be used for good and evil. And I know that we we, taught, we touched on how are artists making money. Are you, uh, you know, you're still doing your um, uh, guitar lessons. So that's your, uh, I don't know, what's your bread and butter? Is it the guitar lessons or is it the touring musician? Or, you know, is there something else? Well, really, the money that you make as a musician, like you said, is from the show. So if you're doing live shows, that's where you're going to make most of your money from from performing and stuff. Or if you have merchandise that you can sell. CDs have really, you know, they've dropped, I mean, in sales sort of thing. People just don't seem to buy the physical product. I think maybe vinyl kind of has sort of made a comeback and has been making a comeback the past couple of years. But the cost to produce it, the cost to make it, you know, to get it. And then to get it shipped, like if I have a distributor in the United States, well, then I've got to pay the whole duty and the exchange on that. And it just ends up costing me so much more, you know, and then I got to sell it for so much more as a novelty item to somebody. And it's hard to get people to want to pay. And if it's only a three song EP or something, then you still got to pay the full price as an album to buy three songs. You know what I mean? So, well, you did, so, say, that mean, you had, you did say that you had a distributor that would uh, uh, press you one album at a time. Yeah. You is that here in the in the states or is that up in Canada? Yeah, that's a company that's based out of uh, Nevada. So um, they were called Kunaki dot com, I believe, and I still have my CDs up, and I can I can get them to send me a few CDs every now and then too. Well, I remember. But, uh, yeah, you can still, <laughs> I, I, yeah, you can still still do vinyl, but it's very very costly, and it's even gone up more since the last we spoke. So I suspect, man, but uh, I guess the. The, the niche would be if uh, we can get a vinyl record that maybe had your picture on it. 
or, or your band, you know, that, you know, something in a, in a different color than, than black, which is not as, uh, as hard as I thought it was. I think you can make a, you know, a yellow or a blue or a, you know, a clear C, uh, record, uh, and it doesn't cost that much more than the black vinyl. You know, I, I think it was, it's just food coloring or something. I, I know it's not food coloring. I think it's just, you know, it's some <laughs> kind of, some other kind of coloring, but, uh, Man, I I do miss records. I I, I had two turntables. I was going to say, how do you feel about all that? You must you must miss the physical uh, packaging and the whole idea of getting that album out and putting it on the turntable. And you know, you must miss that because it becomes so disposable with everything on hard drives now and streaming and all that sort of thing, right? Well, as old as I am, I still try to be a futurist to where I try to keep up with the the technology as it is. Uh, 1999, I gave up my two techniques. I miss my 1202s, man. Those things were great. And, and you know, I had, uh, I had them to where they would just gently touch that, that record. They would not uh, scratch it at all. Uh, even, uh, even though I did have my scratching records and I had my, my uh, cheap uh, stylets, the, the uh, needles, where I would use those for scratching. Hey, let me change up my needles so I can uh, use, uh, do some scratching. Let me get that old record that has the good beats on it. Wiki, wiki, what? You know, and and uh, mm-hmm. and away I went party. Uh, you know, but uh, I, I miss beat matching uh, and and the uh, break beating, uh, which is two different records that have a beat, and then maybe I'd, ha- I'd have an MC that would rap for me. Uh, you know, I guess I could still do it. Uh, you know, with the uh, MP3s, uh, uh, you know the the uh, digital versions, but it just doesn't feel as warm and it doesn't sound as good. Although you know, you buy good speakers. And they're going to sound, you know, it's the equipment that you have. I, um, I don't know if you experience this. If you make a dollar in this business, 99 cents goes right back into the into the uh, the business, buying better equipment, probably another guitar, a PA system, you know, strings. Uh, do you have that feeling? Yep. Studio time, promoting time, you know, promoting costs and all that sort of thing. You just, all the money comes back and goes right back into that. So, like I said, there's not a lot of money left over. <laughs> I keep getting little uh, little surprises behind me here tonight. Well, that that's cool. I mean, this is little uh, Easter eggs for the people that are watching the video, and I encourage you to watch the video. I, I see that uh, that there's a little girl that's still in the hollo- Halloween season, even though we're a little yeah. past it. I, hey, I like costume parties. I'll do costume parties all year long if i can convince a client to say uh, uh oh yeah yeah let's make that luau themed i did a cowboy party at a, at a at a middle school well tell me about the gigs i mean when last we talked you were doing a gig uh, did it end up being a solo a two guitar or two guitars and a cajon uh, on that one a year and a half ago if you can remember back that we were talking about you were going to some uh, some little place um, I'm trying to remember where that was. Was that a little local place, maybe? Yes. And probably would have been just myself and uh, Kevin on the Cajon if it was an acoustic gig. So I think that's where I was at the last time. But we've had, uh, this past summer, we actually got out and we did some band shows, some full band with the four guys. So we had, uh, yeah, we had uh, like full live drums and, and electric guitars and electric bass and stuff. And we did my hometown fair again this summer. And that was an amazing night uh, in August. Of, uh, of this past summer and um, then we did a couple other festivals um, one called the international plowing match was kind of a big farmer sort of event where you know people just celebrate for a whole week of like farming and everything to do with you know plowing fields and all that kind of stuff and so we had a couple really good band gigs and then of course we're still doing the little acoustic things and then sometimes the three of us will get together and just do acoustic uh acoustic shows too so that's what's coming up at the end of the month we're going up to uh to Keene, ontario which is about a three-hour drive from where i am here in ontario canada so and uh it's a little uh Keene center for the arts it's called so it's a, it's a unique perfectly cool unique venue you know so well uh, you know i i like that and i i see that you have uh you know uh, like the kids say uh video or it didn't happen I need to know where the video is of these live performances. And I see that um, you, oh, well, okay. I mean, I guess we can promote uh, what's happening at the Keene Center. You're going to be live over there. What is it? Saturday, November 26th, right? Yep. Is the, And the baby girl's coming with you? 
the family's coming. My wife and my daughter are both coming, and two of the guys from the band are coming. And uh, like I said, she's my daughter's going to be part of a, sort of a little mini Christmas set of maybe three or four songs. Plus, we'll do our normal stuff, my my original material, you know, the Americana, Roots Rock sort of stuff that I do, and then the cover songs in the second set, too. So it's going to be kind of a little mixed bag of everything if, it, if everything goes off cool and we can sell enough tickets and the show happens. What a hoot. Is it uh, Charlie Lynn? Charlie Lynn. It's actually pronounced Charlie. So. Charlie. <laughs> I, I put the sh on the ch. I, hey man, that's okay. Some people do that. <laughs> it's gonna happen her whole life. Um, so uh, probably it, will. It sounds great though. That's a great name, and that's oh man, that sounds like it's gonna be a fun show. And and, and sound. I mean, looking at your your Facebook page, looks like you're getting a lot of airplay. Uh, people are are finding your songs, and uh, and just loving it. I mean, it's not just me. It's not just me and radio. What? It's a well, lot that's of good people. To hear. Thank you very much. But uh, no, but it looks like you you you're getting. Uh, hits on oldies 967 BNR top 40 you got uh you got nominated for a, an award a Josie music award that's a big thing that happens in the independent circuit tell me about that yeah it's always very I'm very grateful and very honored to get nominated again this was the third year I think I've been nominated in some different categories I was nominated for Freedom Road in the Americana folk single of the year category and i was also nominated for my ep that came out uh just uh in mid 2020 and it's uh 33 and a third was the name of the ep and it had three songs that were recorded two of them were recorded in nashville and uh so yeah i was really happy to uh to be nominated again and it was just it's always cool to be you know in such amazing talent from all over the world and just kind of be surrounded with that sort of level level of talent and the people are very cool you know and it was unfortunate i didn't get a chance to go down there this year it just happened like a couple weeks ago and we weren't able to make it but um you know it was uh the grand old opry so maybe someday <laughs> yeah i mean that was going to be my next question i i, I have um I, i've been to memphis many times my mom and stepdad are uh, you know they're we're from the florida keys that's where keys dan came from miami uh, South Florida, the Florida Keys, and I know we talked about you. You did some shows in in Florida, in the upper part of of Florida, from Orlando North. But um, you know, uh, they're building a house just south of Nashville. I need to go out there. You know, just nice. uh, well, hey, visit mom, of course. But uh, but go to Nashville one time and go to the Grand Old Opry. Uh, it's got to be magical. It has to be. Uh, you said you. You, you did do some recording in Nashville. Did you get to spend some time there? Yeah, we got to spend a couple of days. It wasn't a lot of time because we were recording in Spring Hill, which was just sort of on the outskirts of Nashville. And that was in uh, early 2020. And uh, that was an amazing time, though. We got to, my friend Mark came with me again, my guitar player, and we worked with uh, Ben Travis at Two Cats Studios in Spring Hill, which is just outside of Nashville. And um, so we did the two songs. And then, of course, on the last night we were there, we got to travel into Nashville and we got to go see my friend Chris Golden, who uh, I met at the 2019 Josie Music Awards. Well, it's the first time I'd seen him. I didn't actually physically meet him that time, but I kept in touch with him. And then when we got to go back to Nashville in 2020, we went to a little church where he was playing on the last night we were there. And we just got there in time. We missed it with the first three or four songs that was set in this small little church. And uh, it was a, just a beautiful performance. And it was great to see him and, and uh, you know, meet him in person kind of thing and catch up with what he was up to. And he provided some stellar tracks for me on the last two singles that we were talking about, both Freedom Road and Long Hard Rain. He, or Sorry, not Long Hard Rain, Freedom Road and Good Times Gone from the 33 and a Third album. Yeah, he did some mandolin on Good Times Gone and he did the drum tracks and piano and keyboards, organ stuff all on Freedom Road for me, you know via like files that he was sending from from nashville up here to canada so that's kind of how we had to put it all together you know you know this world but, is uh, such a big place but it can get so it can get a whole lot smaller with this internet i know i just said that it can be used for for evil or good or good and i'm, I'm glad that you're you're meeting people uh, from all over the world and then physically you can go in and have, have a visit with them and and get in you know exchange ideas and, and you know me as the consumer, uh, we're the I'm the, uh, the the recipient, the the winner uh, in, in all this because you you're going to expand your mind and and your viewpoints and 
and uh, and get your songwriting uh, that much, you know, not necessarily better, but top, you know, top notch and and, ex- and expand from, you know, this idea. I know that you live in the in the folk singing, but really you have no limits. The the uh, you know the country, the rock, the pop, it all mixes in. It all blends into Corey M. Coons, and I, I like that. And now you're adding the the Christmas. Uh, in there and and it's just well rounded. Uh, well, uh, who was? I mean, there's plenty of bands, rock bands, in fact, that go Christmas album, Christmas album. That's just crazy. And then they do the Christmas album and they get played every year over the other stuff that they thought was their best hit. You know, they uh, hey, that Christmas song gets played every year. <laughs> yeah. So that's I, a, well, like I said, it's it's a whole mixed bag for me. I mean, I'm it's very diverse. All the influences over the years, like we talked about my early my early days as a young kid, growing up listening to country music through my mom, you know, and my dad was into like you know big band era stuff like Dean Martin and and uh, Frank Sinatra and all that stuff. So I mean, that was always playing too. And I've gotten more, um, you know, I've kind of grown an ear for that sort of stuff over the last few years and since he's been passed away too. Maybe it's kind of his whole spirit coming in into play, you know. But there's everything. I mean, I grew up listening to like melodic rock from the '80s. You know, the whole LA and Hollywood scene and and uh, country rock, Americana, folk rock stuff. You know, pop rock. I loved Duran Duran back in the day. They just got nominated for the or got into the Hall of Fame. I mean. So it's just a whole mixed bag of stuff. I just, you know, music's a, music's a healer more than anything in, in a lot of ways too. So, well, it's all, it, it, you know, a lot of it's right back there in that CD rack. You know, you're the history of yeah. you and, and what makes you Corey M. Coons. You're talking about the the, the Hall of Fame. Uh, I just I just read Dolly Parton uh, finally accepted yeah. the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Did she? Did she write a rock song or something? I think that's what she was she was waiting for. She said, "Oh, I don't think I, I belong there because I haven't written a rock song." But I, I don't remember hearing or seeing a rock song that she might have written. She probably did. I just don't don't know about it. I mean, I, 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 more power no, to her. Do- Dolly's awesome. I mean, you, you you gotta love Dolly. But I think the the rock song that comes to mind that she maybe did once was a cover of uh, Collective Souls "Shine." She did like a, a bluegrass version or something of it. You know what I mean? But she's talking about she wants to do a rock album now because she feels she doesn't fit in. I mean, you think about it. I mean, Dolly's a classic, you know, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, what their whole deal is anymore and the standards that they go by. So well, I know all, a lot of people a lot of people are frustrated with the Rock Hall of Fame from what I've heard over the last few years. So It all comes down to, uh, to wh- whatever gets them their dollars i'm sure it's all it, it's got to be political it has to be charged at some point uh you know but uh he who he who could bring the most uh uh butts to the buckets uh people in the seats <laughs> you know, yeah you know whoever can bring the, the draw the bre- the best crowd uh, is who's going to be putting that that hall of fame right unfortunately that comes into play sometimes and it co- becomes more about that and the, the money and the fame that it becomes about the music right so well, we, t- we talked a little bit about social media last time and h- how you're running that. And, uh, you know, I know that uh, sometimes record companies and venues, they don't even look at you unless you got uh, thousands of followers. Uh, how, who's been running your, your social media? Are you still doing it all, all yourself or do you have a team? Is the lovely bride joining in? Oh, uh, that's pretty much all me. I'm pretty self-sufficient. I, I run my own social media and try to stay on that. You know, on top of things as much as I can. I really basically work with Michael Stover for the publicity and the promotions, and Michael's amazing. You know, I've been working with him for three or four years now, and uh, basically anytime there's new music ready to go, I just, you know, give Michael a shout, and we start talking, you know, the ideas for promoting it, and get the budget together for what I can do for the for the song at the time, and Michael's awesome. I mean, he sets up a lot of stuff for me, and gets a lot of, uh, a lot of streaming, a lot of stuff through Spotify, and and gets me, uh, you know, some airplay, some interviews, and all that kind of stuff. And I even got my, uh, I got a nice, really cool article that was done in Cashbox magazine actually recently. A lot of, a lot of the MTS uh, artists that he's working with right now got a nice little feature in Cashbox. So uh, I'm still waiting on my actual physical magazine to arrive in the mail so I can 
show it to some of my friends, but I have the digital stuff on the computer where it's saved, where it showed the articles and stuff. So well, once again, but we're hey, talking you know, about that physical, uh, you know, something you can hold in your hand, something tangible. You know, I, I, I when I was a kid in the eighties, I, I was a subscriber to the Rolling Stone. I loved that magazine. And I know, you know, that, that became political at times, you know, with the uh, different, yeah. you know, with the changing of, of hands and, and when the, uh, the magazine went from uh, the large pulp, to a standard sized uh, glossy, uh, there was a uh, it, it. The magazine changed, but I love the the written word. I'm gl- I'm glad that you have an article that's been written about you. You deserve it for sure. I'm I'm thank you. Not, I, I'm good with uh, I'm better with microphones. You know, if I could do audio books and uh, and, and listen to to audio tapes, even podcasts. But um, you know, the reading. Uh, man, I need to read more. I do. The last, oh my goodness, the last book I read, it was a, a short book, and it took me days to get through it uh, because I, I think I have the the attention span of a of a of a squirrel, you know. But, uh, but I, you know, I, I I'd like to read that article, and it, it's man, I'm so happy for you that you're you're getting recognized, you know, not just with the article, but the the Josie Awards. It's it's gotta it's gotta be good a uh, good feeling uh, to. Uh, you know when you put that those songs out into the world now with, with the social media you know i'm looking you have your soundcloud out there your spotify your apple your amazon i mean what for the kids out there what's the the bang for the buck is is any of this fruitful you know you put you put it out you know people listen to it but are, are you you know the artist needs to get their fair share i you know i, I worry so much that you're putting it out to the world and people are getting millions of hits. I know we talked about that last time too, and, and you're getting, you know, little little to nothing in dollars. You know, what do you? I, what, what's yeah, the place you to put it? Really on? need you need in the millions of streams to really to make anything worthwhile. I mean, you know, it's if it was about the money for me, I don't even know if I'd still be doing it. It's really more about the passion and uh, you know getting the music out there and getting the message out there. And as long as I've got a budget to do it and I'm not, you know, going broke and in the hole, I'm still going to do it. And, you know, I'm self-sufficient enough that I don't have to pay a record label. I, I work with Michael Stover and MTS records, but it's an independent label. So, I mean, anytime I'm working with him, it's all part of, part of what we're doing. Right. So, so, I mean, I've done some, I've done pretty well with the streaming. I mean, I've had some songs in the last couple of years that have, had some pretty good streaming and uh, I'm, I'm happy with that you know for like i said for for an independent self-sufficient musician not working with a big label you know it's uh it's been pretty cool so i'm happy with it well i'm happy for you man because you know you still have to keep a roof over your head you got a family man you're you're a husband and a father and and uh you know that's a a big responsibility i know i'm starting to sound like your mom and dad you <laughs> well I, are you going to make it in the music business what what is this kid uh, do you have a fallback uh, you know uh, but uh I'm pretty it, humble yeah I mean, i'm pretty humble I live live a pretty simple life still like i said we still live on my my grandparents original farm so i mean we just i try to let, live life simple and and get the enjoyment and be passionate about what i do and like I said, that's the whole reason I'm still doing it, I think, you know. That's, well, that's the second time you said farm. Are, are you doing any farming out there? What's going on out, out in the out in the, uh, the back 40? What's what's happening out there? We have some property, but we rent it out to uh, some cash crop farmers who basically plant and, and, you know, take their own crop off it. So we rent it out. So basically it just kind of helps cover the taxes every year sort of thing. And We've got a nice, uh, a nice bush out back of about, uh, I guess it's 30 acres. So there's some trails through it, and uh, my, my dad actually cleared trails through it a number of years ago before he passed away. And there's an old cabin out there and stuff, and so there's a lot of really cool things. And we're really fortunate. And I'm grateful for where we are. Lots of wide open space, and we don't farm it ourselves per se. There's still the old barn and stuff, but we don't have like cows or we don't have animals. Just our 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 house pets, our cats, and my sister's dog, who my sister lives next door to. So. Well, I mean, that's good that you have family close cash crop. I mean, I mean, there is some farming going on on the property, and that's a good thing. The land is being oh, yeah. used. Uh, you know, so what's the, the family activity? Do you guys get out and do some, some hiking and walking through the, the woods and such? Uh, well, you and the daughter? <laughs> hey, daughter yeah, in motion. We <laughs> yeah, we love it. We just got out and did some trails there in the last uh, month or so, actually. So, you yeah, know, we love to do that. And 
just get out for a walk up and down the country road here too, you know, lots of exercise in that. And she likes to rollerblade, so. Can you rollerblade on a country road? <laughs> I guess you can get a special kind of rollerblades. I used to like rollerblading so much. <laughs> well, I still call it a country road. It's not gravel anymore. It's actually paved. So we have an actual paved road in the country, so. Very cool. So. I, I rode yeah. my, uh, I had uh, lightning roller, roller blades and I, I, I rode those things till they disintegrated. It was, uh, that, that was a lot of fun. I, I was uh, the four wheeled roller skater back in the 70s and 80s. And, uh, and then I, I could not uh, ice skate to save my life. But right in the middle is the roller blading. So I was really good at yeah. rollerblading. I can go backwards and forwards. I even did some jumps in the parking lot. So, uh, yeah, I was pretty good at rollerblading. How about you, Charlie? You uh-huh. good at rollerblading? Yeah. What All right. Got to show. Got something to show, Dan? Oh, she's got something to show you. All right, Hi, show. Charlie. Show the people, and we'll get on out of here. So, uh, here's my, uh, I don't know if you can, okay. Uh, okay. Here's my little home screen I have for my tablet. Yeah. It's my stuff. <laughs> Up there. there it is. That's a cool cat. <laughs> a cool kitty. <laughs> That's beautiful. You like singing with your dad, Charlie? Kind of. Okay. All right. <laughs> hey, you the whole world's He's ahead. Getting older. Yeah, the whole world's ahead of you. You can do anything anything you want. Anything. All but right. Is this is is this gonna be posted on YouTube? I swear to <laughs> Okay, bye bye. <laughs> No, uh, go. I mean, hey, are there any other avenues you want to uh, promote or, or anything else you want to talk about? I'm just really happy that you have me back on the show. Thanks very much, Dan. And hopefully uh, you reach some new listeners tonight and some new fans. And go to my website, www.coreymcoons.com, and you can check out all the links that you mentioned. They're all there. Spotify, Apple iTunes, uh, YouTube. And uh, there's actual physical product there if you do want to buy a CD, if you're old school. You, know, you can hook, hook yourself up, and I can send you something from there. So, But just thanks, everybody. Thanks for, uh, thanks for all the support you've given me on the last couple, couple times on with you, too. So I appreciate you being back on, Corey M. Coons. Go ahead and give some shout-outs to, to anybody that you haven't mentioned, and then, uh, and then we'll uh, give some last words for the people and get on out of here. Yeah, I'd just like to thank, like we mentioned, Michael Stover for all his promoting work he's been doing for me. And uh, I'd like to thank my guys in the band, Mark and Kevin, and my bass player, Frank, who's been out with me this summer, too. And um, just all the people that have helped out over the last few years, studio guys. I got the chance to work with Ron Nevison in, uh, in California and um, some of those guys that I met down there. And um, just everybody that's uh, been you know, everybody that you meet in life and who comes across your path has something to uh, to offer, and it's all good. So thanks, everybody, for all your support. Yeah, everybody gives you a little insight, a little, a little piece of, of what makes you you. And, and uh, you know, take it with the good and take it with the bad, you know, and, and learn from the Thanks to my family for supporting us and, you know, for supporting for sure. me and sticking it out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Without them, there's no way you could be doing this. No way. You need to have the good support system that you have. And I'm glad that you, every time I see you on, on my social media, you got a big smile on your face. And I see your family out out in the, and, and about doing great things out in the wilderness. Yeah, I like the header where you're just sitting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the boonies. Oh, my goodness. You, I mean, the wonderful waterfall that you have on your Facebook header. I want to go to there. <laughs> but, um, yeah. all right. I, I always finish these things off with last words for the people. This could be words to live by, uh, something you heard a long time ago, or uh, just a mantra that you wake up with every morning, or whatever pops into your head at this moment in time. Corey M. Coons, give the last words for the people. I just like to say, surround yourself with the right people and the right team of players and anything you're going to do in your life, whether it's you know entertainment or whatever line of work you do, you got to surround yourself with the right people, people who believe in you and uh, you got to believe in yourself, man, and follow your dreams and whatever you, uh, whatever you can be positive about, it's going to make, it's going to happen for you. So, and I think a little mantra would be, don't let your music die inside of you. That's an old Wayne Dyer quote, Dr. Wayne Dyer, so. Well, there you have it, party people. Corey M. Coons with a special appearance by Charlie. (laughs) Charlie Lynn.
<laughs> oh my goodness, so cute. But uh, you know, hey, he's a family man. He's a singing man. He's putting those uh, those thoughts and ideas to pen to paper, and uh, and putting making them into songs, and giving them to the world. Uh, that's fantastic. That's a fantastic power that you can uh, see some things, hear some things, think some things, put and make them into songs. Change people's lives. Change people's ideas. Or you know, even if you don't change them, at least you give them another perspective. Corey M. Coons. I admire you for that. I applaud you for that. <laughs> Thanks for being on the What Makes You Famous podcast. Once again, I look forward to chatting with you more, following you around on your social medias. All the links are in the show notes, so make sure you check them out. Uh, uh, starting first and foremost with CoreyMCoons.com. That's Corey, C-O-R-Y, no E-Y, C-O-R-Y-M, Coons, K. Uh, C-O-O-N-S. Let me say that cleanly. C-O-R-Y-M-C-O-O-N-S dot com. And find all the links there. Find all the links to shows. And uh, follow him on his Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. That way you'll know where to find Corey M. Coons at an event near you. At a location near you. <laughs> Oh, man, I hope I get to go see a show one of these days. Corey M. Coons. All right, thank you so much once again for being on the podcast, What Makes You Famous. Now, if you, I'm turning my attention to you, if you'd like to tell your story, I encourage you to give me a call, 501-470-6386, or email keysdan at aol.com. That's it for me. It's keysdanradiowhat.com, djlittlerock.com. Peace. I'm out of here. <laughs>